Hello and welcome everyone to another InventRight webinar. My name is Andrew Krauss and I'm over there on the left in the dark jacket, the guy without the glasses. And I co-founded InventRight with the guy with the glasses on the left there over 20 years ago or coming up on 21 years. I need to check when that date is. And we've been coaching and mentoring inventors ever since to successfully license their products. Um, and we've had students in over 65 countries. Um, during this whole like pandemic, whatever you want to call it, uh, we've really reached out to the inventor community. We've been doing a lot of free webinars that people have really been enjoying and inviting different guests on. And today's guests are uh, Kevin LaRue and Keith Elliott, and they have licensed what Stephen and I know to be a very, very big idea. Now, every inventor thinks their idea is a big idea, but by the end of this webinar, you're going to learn what is the definition of a big idea. And that doesn't, okay, a really big idea, right? So your idea might have a big idea, you're excited about it, can sell a ton, but you're going to learn why this is a really big idea. And we'll further define, without trying to define it up front, you'll get an idea of what we mean by that. So welcome, Kevin and Keith. How are you doing? Hey, good. very good, Andrew. Thanks How are you? Oh, and I forgot to mention, Stephen's on another webinar presenting to an inventor's association, so he's going to be about 10 or 15 minutes late. I forgot to mention that. So that's why he's not speaking yet. So we're just going to get going, and Stephen will jump in a little bit later. So you guys have been working on this for a while. Um, I think this is the type of thing that I just need to just uh, you know, pull up a page here as I talk to you guys. So people get an idea of what we're talking about. So can you tell us a little bit about this? It's a packaging innovation, right? Yeah, so it's a packaging innovation. It's a, uh, a consumer goods uh, packaging product. And basically uh, the, the definition of, of that is uh, something that carries uh, a primary container. So we're a secondary packaging product. And uh, what we aim to do is to create something uh, that would replace a low density polyethylene, high density polyethylene, uh, plastics, um, shrink wrap, uh, create a product that can reduce uh, carton board usage uh, when you look at, uh, say, a multi-pack in a full wrap carton. So uh, we have the ability to, to, to solve for several uh, problems with plastics and also reduction of materials in materials that are already sustainable. So the, one of the reasons why this is a big idea is just one of many is the volume, right? I mean, the, can you speak to the volume that is done with beer, with water, with soda? I mean, it must be insane. Yes, it, it is massive. Um, there are about 350 billion uh, packs, uh, beverage packs, between uh, carbonated soda, beer, and so on, and, and uh, the rest of the industry. So, uh, and you know, that's globally. So the volumes are massive. Uh, we have never aimed to solve for every package on the planet. Uh, that's not doable. Uh, but we know that with uh, with enough uh, application that we can make a massive impact uh, uh, in the industry uh, and on consumer goods packaging to help eliminate plastics. So, uh, you know, this idea being a big idea, you know, is big because even if uh, we can solve for a small percentage of the business, uh, we can make a major impact. Now, so, so why is this better than plastic rings? What's the problem that you're solving? So plastic rings, um, beyond being a consumer frustration point, uh, they last quite a long time in the environment, right? So even if they're photodegradable, uh, what ends up happening with plastic rings is they ended up they end up breaking down, uh, and and you know typically when you maybe get a pack, you'll cut them with scissors, you know you have the initial turtle problem or the uh, uh, the water bird problem where things get tangled. Uh, and, and oftentimes uh, uh, strangled or die from that. But uh, really what happens is those plastics break down into smaller plastics called microplastics, right? And microplastics break down further and further and further uh, and into the point where they become food for all organisms. Uh, they have found microplastics in the Mariana Trench, which is the deepest trench in the ocean, uh, and phytoplankton have ingested microplastics. So what happens at that point is when the phytoplankton and the plankton and then subsequently larger 
organisms and animals eat each other, uh, they end up ingesting. And, and eventually that makes its way to us. Uh, and blood has now been found in the human bloodstream on a common level. So we all have wow. plastic in our bloodstream. So wow. this is the bigger problem. And this is, you know, part of the ethos of, of our company, knowing that we're not going to solve every problem in the world. Uh, it's we think it's a noble cause to help replace plastics in packaging. Well, you now, know, I'm a pescatarian. I eat tons of fish. Are you telling me I got a bunch of plastic in my veins? You're yes. loaded. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to welcome Stephen. Stephen just joined us. He was speaking at another, like I mentioned earlier, at the Veterans Association. Thank you, Stephen. Well, us. well, I want to thank you, and I want to thank Kevin. Kevin, is Keith on too? Just to make sure. Yes, Kevin. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, fantastic, you guys. So, what did I miss? Um, Everything. Okay. Oh, no, Steven, I haven't. Really it's really only 506. <laughs> it's only 506. I want to say one thing before we really dive deep into this. Um, when I first met Kevin, and and um, he had this idea for a packaging innovation, and I tried to talk him out of it. Yes, you did. <laughs> and he's so stubborn, he wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> Andrew, and, and that's a true sign of an entrepreneur that wasn't going to take anybody's advice. Because I think I know a little bit about packaging. I've been in it for 25 years, and I know the heartache and how tough it is. And I kept on saying, forget it, forget it, forget it. And he didn't. And it's because of what he just explained to you of how important this is to each and every person on this planet. And once I started seeing the passion and 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 Kevin and even Keith's, you know, dedication to this, it was important. It's important to everyone. And that's why I'm really proud to have both these gentlemen on tonight because. I tried to talk him out of it. And now the whole world is doing some variation of this design. And I just want to say congratulations, Keith um, and Kevin, on doing on, on, on not listening to me. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. And uh, you're, you're, you're an amazing wealth of wisdom. Um, this product uh, drove us. And um, we wouldn't listen to anybody, so don't take offense. <laughs> Oh, I know. I trust you. And, you know, <laughs> everybody that's listening tonight, this, this lecture is about big ideas. Because at, in, at InventRight, um, we talk a little bit about simple ideas, don't we, Andrew? Yeah, we help right. people with big and simple ideas. And, and I, yeah, I but... promised everybody at the beginning that by the end, they'll understand why this is a big idea without trying to define it up front. You know? Well... We see at InventRight, the majority of the ideas that we see are, are fairly simple. Um, simple in that they could be manufactured, they're scalable, uh, there's less in education involved. So the path is a little bit different, but when you see an idea that can impact um, so many different cu uh, customers around the world, and impact manufacturing facilities, there's costing issues, there's just this big change and change is hard. And I think mm -hmm. that's why I think this is gonna be a really interesting uh, talk because that change is not easy. So um, have we covered everything? Because I've got a list of questions. Kevin and Keith, tell me, have we have you covered everything about this package that you think it's no, important? No, no, we just we just hit upon the environmental benefit of it. Yeah, it was we just... still haven't even hit on how he came up with it, and oh, then good. also on the other benefits besides environmental, which there are benefits there, right? Yeah, absolutely, yes, absolutely. So why okay. can we can we reach back before we get too deep into the benefits and talk about? Where, how did this come up? How did this come to you? Well, you know, I think like most people, plastic rings growing up always kind of drove me crazy. Um, obviously, we've known for decades the harm that they cause, but it's been fairly minimized. You know, good marketing does that. And um, sometimes ignorance, uh, you know, helps uh, 
to, you know, you just use them and you throw them away and something happens at the other end and it's okay. But, you know, really understanding, I think most people always had an issue with them and no one really likes them. So I thought about it over the years and it always kind of bugged me and it always sat there in the back of my mind. And I think one day uh, I, I saw an image of, of the peanut turtle. I don't know if you've seen it. It's a pretty famous image. It's a turtle which had been uh, constrained by a six pack ring and, and the shell had actually grown around uh, and into sort of like a, what looks like an, uh, a peanut. Uh, and uh, it was pretty uh, a pretty impactful image. So I looked at that and I thought about the history of my, uh, uh, my, my uh, you know, um, disregard for those plastic rings. And, and I thought, let's see, I'm a problem solver. Uh, let's see what I can do. Let's see if we can come up with, with, with a better way. So um, I looked at a bunch of different options, did, you know, spent quite a bit of time ideating uh, and uh, really looking for ways to, uh, uh, on a peripheral level, on a 10,000 foot level, how can this be solved? And, uh, and basically started from there and, and just looked at paper and wanted to look at a way to do this that's not plastic and understanding that everybody uses plastic and plastic is very durable and plastic is a fantastic material for durable goods, but it's not a good material for uh, single use consumer goods. So uh, that was really the impetus of it. That was the idea came from this is a problem. I like to try to solve problems. What are the ways that we can attempt uh, to, to come up with a better solution? Well, can we show the image of the turtle? Andrew, I think you have it on another slide, please. Yeah. Yeah, that wow, was the image. Disturbing. That's a pretty heartbreaking image. All these images are. Yeah, you know, and there's there's images. I mean, they're very easy to find. You can look at images that are quite a bit more grotesque than this with seabirds that are cut open and you can see they're fully ingested uh, with plastic. Uh, they die from suffocation, uh, you know. Um, th these are the things that we don't like to look at and, you know, really understanding in, in our business that um, it's maybe not the, the the headline that you go to uh, with a customer, because really everybody understands this, um, mm -hmm. but it is a grim reality of it, and uh, it's not pretty, but it, it helps motivate the reason for the product. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Um, before we get too far again, uh, how'd you meet Keith? I mean, you gotta build a team, and we're gonna talk about team building, how important it is, Oh, there we go. Um, yeah. How did how did you guys get together? How did you meet? And and uh, did you talk about what your background is first of all, Kevin? Did you no. talk about what no. you do, your Not day yet. job? No. So okay, talk, uh, talk about your day job and how yeah. you met Keith and what is his day job? So I'm a serial entrepreneur, uh, but you know, I my first job I was nine years old, and I I worked at a pizza place so I could make quarters to play Pac-Man. So I've always been driven uh, to, to, uh, to go out there and create things and, and work. I'm not afraid of that. Uh, I got into, uh, into the film and television business uh, and that really has become my passion and, uh, and, and, and my business for a couple decades plus. Uh, and really what that afforded me is, is an ability to be creative uh, to work with teams, uh, to um, be in different environments, uh, to really have an interesting career and, and never in the same place twice and travel the world. So I think that was a big benefit for me in this business. Uh, I'd also had the luxury, uh, the benefit of working trade shows. So, uh, and I know we'll talk about this later on, but I, I've, I've been to hundreds and hundreds of trade shows. So it gave me a little bit of advantage when it came to, uh, to, to understanding what we needed to do to learn this business. But uh, uh, I came from a really creative business and I, I'm a creative and visual person. Uh, so, I, uh, you know, I went in, I went in whole hog and, and I had ability to take time to be creative and uh, Keith can tell about his, his background as well. 
Yeah, I'm a um, full-time engineer in the construction industry. Um, specifically, I work on high-end uh, cabinets for homes um, and kind of like having, I've, I've done a lot of design work for trade show booths and, and traveled around the, uh, the U.S. doing that as, as well. Um, so that's what I've done for the past nearly 25 to 30 years now. Um, so I've got a really good engineering background. Um, you know, Kevin had had this initial idea. Let me actually back up a little bit. We've been friends prior business for, I don't know, probably at least 15 years, at least. Yeah, yeah quite some time. Close to it. Yeah. Um, you know, and it just started as a casual conversation one day. Um, you know, he was talking about this idea that he had, and he was looking for someone to do some some uh some cad drawings for him and i kind of just volunteered and said yeah i'll do do that for you and it was kind of just like a rabbit hole that became fishbone packaging um started doing a little more a little more then i started giving some engineering advice mm -hmm. and you know lo and behold within probably a year or so we had really gone full force and and then founded fishbone packaging no, no, wait a minute. Both you guys are not in the packaging industry. <laughs> Neither one of us had zero any packaging industry knowledge until until one fateful phone call. Which I think was a benefit in hindsight. Yeah. I, <laughs> if we would have known then what we know now, it probably would have gone differently. Yeah, I, I agree. Sometimes being a little naive is actually works in your favor, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Wow. Okay, yeah, you know, um, and I want to say to that real quickly, you know, Keith had really stepped up in in his offer to uh, really help out. And I, I went to him with some questions and, and he came to the plate. And I think that's really important when you're trying to build uh, a business. You want to work with people that see your passion and understand the value. And uh, it really made it an easy transition uh, to 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 but, forming a relationship there. But Kevin, how do you really know when you go into partners with somebody that they have the same passion, they're gonna work as hard as you do? How, how did you know that? Because I know you guys really well, work hard at this. How, how'd you know that? I, I, I knew Keith's work ethic and I could, I, I just saw the, 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 the immense amount of uh, ideas that he was coming with and, and the passion that he was bringing to the table. And I don't know that I thought about it um, too much. You know, I didn't sit down and think, well, is this, you know, is Keith going to be the person that I'm looking for mm -hmm. uh, necessarily? But it, he just came with a passion and with a willingness and an understanding. And, and honestly, I knew he wasn't in the packaging industry, but the dialogue that I had with, with Keith and his apparent immediate understanding of the business and, and the things that were important to packaging, I could see he knew more than he knew. Okay. And so that had so, a lot of value. Oh, before we get to the next question, I just want everybody to know that this packaging innovation is sweeping the world right now. I don't, did you talk about that at all? No. Okay. I, I want people to know the magnitude of this. Um, because Fishbone has been out since, I don't know, what, two, 2014? Yep, 2014 uh, okay. yeah, at, at a low and, level. And they, they've done a lot of work. They've met with the largest companies. And you're seeing Fishbone on worldwide, internationally known packaging now. Is that correct? That, that is correct. Okay. Correct. And what's happened is that the phone is ringing off the hook from every major company in the world just about. Is that correct, too? That is correct. Okay, so I want everybody to understand, here you, here you have this idea, you're not from the industry, we're gonna talk about some of the pitfalls and going forward. You're not in this industry at all, you jump in, you're not quite sure what you're, you're doing, but you, you, you think it's a good cause, which they both did, and we're gonna talk about all the steps. But it finally leads to, because there was years where no one even really cared that much, is that true? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I'd say it's true. You know, we knew early on um, a couple things, and one is that we needed to get uh, some market acceptance, and we went immediately because you know we talked to some of the bigger 
you know, bottlers. And we, through some networking, we were able to get so, some conversations spun up. And and there they feigned interest. One of them did, but ultimately there was no real interest. So we knew that what we had to do is get to the smaller, the mom and pop, the craft brewers. Mm -hmm. And okay. and when we did that, we saw that there was opportunity there. But uh, but that's um, that's you know that's only the beginning. Yeah. See, I want people to realize how important timing is. Yeah. Because this team has been working hard for a long time and I tried to talk them out of it. They did not listen. And they kept on pushing, going to trade shows and all the things they're doing and getting a little bit of traction. But it was still an uphill push, 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 push. Now what's happened is that the whole world is finally caught up. And we'll talk about what happened for that to 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 transpire. But now you see Fishbone is Fishbone. What type of brands are people using Fishbone on today? Overseas. Overseas, uh, Heineken, um, Coca Cola, uh, a variety of 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 brands. Pretty a lot of small companies, and um, and they they see the light and. So I, I want everybody to understand you work on an idea. You're not quite sure you step into it, but you have this passion. You have to have the passion. And before you know it, things change. The phone starts ringing off the hook. People start to notice. So, Kevin, Keith, yes. what was the one thing that started to change everything for this packaging and why it became so important? What was the one thing in your mind? Keith, you want to speak to that? I think, I think for us, I mean, internally, we, you know, like, like you said, we've been at this for quite a few years now and our initial plan was, you know, go straight to these big guys and, and try and strike a licensing deal. And, you know, these big companies are, are slow moving giants in their own right. Um, and we ended up pivoting and shifting to try and get some market acceptance and, and get our foot in the market. And I think that's where, at least for me, that's where we really started getting some, some traction when we shifted and we, we went out for that craft brew market. But, um, what was the, what, but what was the one thing that turned the world around that happened in the UK? Uh, well, the drive, yeah. yeah, drive from the uh, not only the changing laws, but the uh, the grocery chains. Uh, yeah. The the retailers has said Tesco. No more Tesco plastic. was banning all secondary packaging, plastic yeah. packaging. But what what tipped them? Uh, well, what tipped them? Um, there was a uh, there was a documentary uh, called uh, what is that Blue Planet. Uh, which they actually that launches David Attenborough Attenborough uh, documentary and BBC got so much response from that actually uh, that actually helped push uh, the retailers uh, to really understand that that uh, they're that you know they're a lot more progressive in Europe obviously but that really helped push them it was one of the large components to say we are not going to accept any more plastics after 2021 in secondary packaging it's amazing what a movie can do yeah yes i mean it it, it was that tipping point of saying look this is this is not acceptable we have to make changes okay yeah. uh let's talk about this product right here this is on the market today yes correct and this looks like water. I think it's Proud Source One. Great looking package. The other benefits, in my mind, a fishbone, not the plastic greens are not great. We know that. But look at the graphics here. You didn't have that with the plastic. Is that a big plus for companies? Absolutely. Absolutely. Advertising. Advertising sells. Yeah. Okay. You know, we, we understand that, that part of during our ideation and, and looking at what we needed, what we wanted to create was we wanted to create not only a, a materials uh, uh, option 
out of plastic, but we wanted to add, we wanted to give them an added benefit. So we're creating a space uh, for marketing where there was not prior uh, a space for marketing, right? So we, we always say that you get the benefits uh, of a carton without the disadvantages of plastic. So we're, we're in between that. So we're a unique uh, uh, proposition in our solution that we, we kind of toe the line. Uh, we work like a, like a plastic ring, but we act like a carton. And, and we use that because we knew no matter what, we were not going to be able to be on par or, I mean, we can get close to it, but be on par with what it costs to produce a plastic ring. So we, you're using this advertising space yeah. to help offset that. And by adding value, you're just not replacing one thing for another, but replacing it with something new with added value to it. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to talk about costs in just a minute. Okay, so let's back up now. Huge demand. You guys have been working on it for a while. You start to get customers, but let's let's go even further back. You come up with this idea. Um, what do you do? What are your first steps? What, what 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 was in your mind that was important? Was it the prototypes going to a trade show? What was the first steps in your your um, in your mind, Kevin? Well. Really, uh, you know, initially is doing our due diligence, learning about the market, doing research, talking to consumers, bottlers, and for us, those bottlers were smaller bottlers uh, in craft and and such. Uh, we reached out to the Plastic Pollution Coalition, the Ocean Foundation, the sustainability experts, and 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 we wanted to get a bit of background there and and get their their insight, uh, you know, and, and oftentimes they talk to the bottlers. So we figured that would be a good place. But but really from there, we we just built rough prototypes and you can see this prototype here on the screen. And we really went to uh, to work through the solutions, what those solutions might look like, whether it's, you know, and this is just a corrugate board. I mean, this is a piece of, uh, uh, you know, trash eff effectively. Um, but we cut apart cereal boxes. We looked at molded pulp. We looked at you know a variety of of materials and 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 then we we really wanted to see and we knew that that if the product were to be successful, it, it had to be capable, it had to add value, right? We wanted that value proposition, but it had to be desirable by both the manufacturers and the consumers. So we knew and, and Keith can speak to this. It had to be machinable. Like you can create the most fantastic widget on the planet. But if right. you can't put it on a set of cans, it's worthless, right? And 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 also knowing that uh, when when a customer, you know, when a bottler changes out a piece of equipment, that's not a small decision. So we knew that it had to be something that could uh, be effective uh, on the filling line, uh, and and really be something that the that a bottler could see replacing, and and that opened up a can of worms <laughs> because there's a lot of unknowns there, and We've learned a, a, an amazing amount, and and we're learning on a daily basis. So just so everybody knows, you get a piece of cardboard, you get your exacto blade out, you start doing uh -huh. some cuttings and measuring, and, and maybe a laser printer, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it basically, it's on your kitchen table, correct? At that point, yeah. But you know, correct. when Keith came on board, we ramped pretty quickly, and and Keith said, "Hey, let's buy a laser." And I said, what do you mean let's buy a laser? And, and he said, uh, hey, this is the laser that I would like, that, that I think would work well. And, you know, it's only $6,000. Uh, so we went in halves and we bought a laser, you know. Um, we quickly moved because that's the other thing that we understood was that to really go through this process, uh, we looked briefly at outsourcing this work. And uh, to really be effective, we had to do it. We had to. This had to be an in-house proposition. So, um, absolutely, we went in. We went in with both feet. Yeah, we okay. can. You know, being literally just two guys, we have been able to move quicker and faster than a lot of these larger companies um, with our prototyping. I mean, we can we can whip through you know a half dozen designs in in an afternoon because we can do it all in-house and everything's within arm's reach. So we can, you know, somebody calls us, hey, we have, you know, such and such container, can you do something? Yeah, send us some some samples or some dim dimensions and, and we can 
prototype something pretty pretty rapidly. So wait a minute, wait a minute, because everybody's a little confused here. You're you're two guys, and we'll talk about your team a little bit later. But you're a small team, and you're yes. going up against billion dollar companies. I mean, Correct. just Correct. just a couple guys. And and do you have an office? Do you guys go to an office? My garage. You know, yeah, he, he, the, <laughs> the workshop is in Keith's garage. You know, we each of our team members works out of out of our own uh, our own offices at, at our homes, and uh, yeah, we're we're, we're, we're agile. Two guys started so, in a garage. That's that's our mo. Well, a lot of famous companies inventors started in their garage. <laughs> so that's probably really good sign. I'm and, a fan um, of we, one of them. I'm, I'm yeah. glad you said that. We'll need a visual of that sometime. Um, but the, what I want everybody to understand, it, it comes with an idea you're passionate about. You try to figure it out along the way. But at the end of the day, was it, did you realize you were going to be dealing with billion dollar companies? And was that a little daunting? Or is that something you said, well, we'll just figure it out or fake it till you make it? What was your mindset to realize you're going into a really big situation here? Well, I think our, I mean, our initial goal was, yeah, that's that's what we wanted to do, but I don't ever remember really being intimidated by it. Yeah. It was just, you know, another day at the office, moving forward, learning. Um, I think it, it probably sets in a little bit later on in the years, the really the magnitude and things that, that we go through, but on a day-to-day -day basis, you, mm -hmm. you really don't think about it. You're just laser you're focused just forward. Yeah, you're just making strides forward. And and they're just people you're talking with, even at these big companies, correct? Absolutely. 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 Go on LinkedIn, find the person, look at their image. They're usually smiling, uh, which <laughs> helps uh, because you can really put a name to a face. And even if it's a, if it's a cold call, um, at least you can have a visual of who you're talking to. And oftentimes the person looks pretty nice and it, it helps uh, bring that level of ease up. And uh, yeah, they're just people. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, we, we know we're swimming with sharks uh, and, and we are, you know, just a couple of guys, but the, the product, uh, you know, has driven us and nothing matters. It doesn't matter. You know, I, um, I think I told you before I, I, did some work being a serial entrepreneur in, in the Middle East. And um, and I, I spent some time there and uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I didn't really think about the the peripheral danger. I just went and did it because the job just needed to be done. So I think so, that's that's what we looked at. It just let's just let's just do what we need to do. So when you have a Pepsi or a Coke or Anheuser Busch on the line and you're talking to these guys, and you know the magnitude of who they are and who you are, it doesn't rattle you? No, I mean, because like you said, at the end of the day, these people are people. Um, and, and a lot of the, our initial, you know, conversation with these larger companies, they've, they've reached out to us. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're talking with the procurement manager. We're talking mm -hmm. with, you know, the, the innovations manager. Um, not to say we haven't spoke with, you know, presidents and vice presidents of, of these companies as well, but these people are just people and you treat them like people and it's, it goes a long way. Okay. It also so, helps when they reach out to you. Yeah, definitely. Well, <laughs> yeah. And your phone is ringing off the hook. So that's a really good thing. Okay. So you, you've got this idea, you got a piece of cardboard, you got a laser printer, you're making some samples. Uh, what do you do next? I mean, do you just call a company up, reach out to them, LinkedIn, go to a trade show and go, hey, here we are. What do you do next? You, you realize you have to design a way to apply it. Okay. Uh, and, and that's a whole nother can of worms. Uh, <laughs> and, and again, that's where Keith came in and, and designed the application. But, but effectively, uh, you know, what we really did is, is we continued to learn about the industry and we went to trade shows. And we really wanted to arm, immerse ourselves in the industry. And we did that um, not going out uh, showing our product necessarily, but just going out to do research and, and learn about the business, get eyes on the machinery, 
uh, that might be something that we might utilize or adapt or might be a platform for our for our application learn the language of the industry so that when we're speaking with uh, other industry folks later on during conversation we can have a, a competent conversation and we can be really uh, um, confident in, in in that so um, and that's really been key when we're speaking with these larger companies because we have done our homework in the past and we very rarely have any any questions that we cannot answer so okay so so let's step back for a minute so you go to the trade shows i know you went to chicago it's one of the pack expos probably the largest yep. machine supply trade show in the world you're there and you're probably walking around you probably have a little briefcase with some sell sheets in there maybe some yep. samples and you walk up to the major companies like crohn's they're big they're worldwide you just walk them and go hey this is uh Keith and uh, Kevin, and uh, we got the latest, greatest in innovation. You guys are going to love it. How do you do that? Well, the great thing is that at a trade show, all the people standing around the floor, they want to talk, right? Because they think you're a customer, more than likely. So it's it's fairly easy to strike up a conversation. And, and you know, you start discussing things, and you kind of feel out the conversation. And it's it's fairly easy to get the sense of, of uh, the person you're talking to and and whether or not you should take that conversation to the next level uh, and maybe throw something out there and say, hey, yeah, we have a packaging product that we are developing, you know, and you can kind of give some 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 general information. And uh, if if it makes sense, you know, then maybe you show them uh, what you've got. And, and if they seem like uh, it, this might not be the person to talk to, you know, maybe you move on to the next uh, to the next booth. Okay. Okay. All right. So you learn the language, you meet the people, you invest t your time. Yes. Understand the money. industry. Yes. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about, if you look back on some of those early days, because it's come a long way. Um, yes. Any mistakes along the way? <laughs> yeah. Where to start? Do we have enough time? <laughs> Part two. Okay. I, I, I know. I know that Keith will have some some thoughts. I know one of my initial thoughts is uh, filing intellectual property too early, before we really knew what was important. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we we had a lot of ideas, and uh, and we we built out. Uh, we wrote several patents. Of course, we didn't write the claims, but. Um, we we spent a lot of time really trying to understand wh how we could uh, uh, create intellectual property, and really we didn't have the machinery uh, to go hand in hand with that. So uh, perhaps there's some things uh, that we did file earlier than uh, than we should have. Uh, we've rectified that, and, and we've gone back and successively filed since more uh, more uh, applicable uh, patents. Uh, and I, I, spending too much money on on filing too early, I think that's another one. Um, well, you know what it is too, though. You don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah, and absolutely. You, absolutely. You, yeah, and you file because um, you you're not quite sure you 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 know all the pieces yet, but you got to get something in the ground. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. common. Yeah. Um, but um, I think you do realize that. The machine aspect of it, the scalability is probably pretty critical. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we could for for us, we could definitely use contract manufacturers to get the product manufactured, but getting a machinery company lined up mm -hmm. at the end of the day, honestly, it's, it's probably more difficult than the development of the product when 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 okay. we look look back on it. Let's talk about um, public disclosure for just a minute. Mm -hmm. How important is to keep things confidential? <laughs> Extremely important. Extremely. Uh, that that's definitely you know an area where we likely disclosed more than than we could have or should have uh, early on because we we weren't really sure about that and we we really had a lot of interest so we wanted to show some things on our website. And okay. and so I think it's not all bad because 
because of that, we did have quite a few uh, customers, and I mean hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, uh, uh, big and small, come to us. Uh, and, and we really did establish Mm -hmm. uh, that we are the dominant uh, force. We are the innovators in in this area of of, of packaging. So, um, okay. yeah, we absolutely would have done things different. There's 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 benefits uh, as well as 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 there's, some of the negatives to that. A, a fine line of what you show. Definitely. Definitely. So Definitely, everybody, yeah, I, what's that? Go Keith? ahead, Stephen. No, if 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 you're going to the trade shows, you definitely want to be careful. Um, okay. That's. That's one of the the bigger things that that we've learned, and I mean we've got some specific incidences that I can re remember where we really should have not done what we done or shown somebody something, but uh, yeah, just really know what you can show and not show before you go to a trade show. Yeah, that's such an important topic that um, we'll be doing more information on public disclosures, how to be. Uh, how to show your product but still be very um, some of the, the important stuff that you keep very confidential. It's a fine line, isn't it? It's not easy. Yeah. You, you, you got to show them enough to get interest, but not enough that could hurt you. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. And, and, Absolutely. And the NDA is only going to get you so far as well. So you, you just you really right. got to know who you're talking to. I think okay. that is also a bigger key thing as well. Know who you're talking to and know who that company is in bed with as well because especially mm -hmm. in the packaging industry mm -hmm. you have these larger companies that own a ton of subsidiaries so you may think you're talking to somebody but their parent company may be your direct competitor Got so it. you really want to do your homework before you start talking to people and St steven would you say you've been in the packaging business for 25 years would you say that's you need to be extra careful with a packaging product or maybe some other big ideas where you don't need to be so much with a simple product. Yeah, the, the packaging industry is probably the toughest industry I, I've been involved in. And they're absolutely right. There's some, you, you don't know the relationships. You don't know enough about how everything's connected at the very beginning. So it's a little bit dangerous. And because of the volume and the potential, uh, it's a pretty tough industry. So you have to be a little guarded, but you can't be too guarded. You have to file first, but maybe not too early. You have to make sure that your manufacturing works, which is probably the most critical thing. It's, it's, just, it's, a, it's a fascinating industry. It's not an easy industry, um, but the, the, the opportunity of, uh, um, of having the impact that this product is having now, you could tell all the companies are jumping on board. Um, they see what these two people have, have done and uh, the benefit of it. So it's not it's not the great place to start it for your first idea. Okay, I could say that. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That's your, it's your first idea. Do something else, but they didn't listen to me, Andrew, which is a great thing. Um, I want to talk about, I'm uh, moving on real quick. Cause I know we've got 50 more minutes. How important is to build a smart team around you? It's critical. You know, I think anybody knows. And, and again, I come from a television and film background and, um, but, but it really is, you know, relates to any business. Um, more than likely, you're not going to do everything on your own. Uh, you know, even if you're a tennis player, uh, you have coaches, right? So uh, really building a team for any product, uh, especially a big idea, is critical. You really need to operate it more like a company in that respect where, uh, you know, everybody has their role and and you really need to rely on everybody on, on each other. Uh, you know, there's things that I do that Keith, uh, you know, I keep him abreast of. We have company meetings, but that's my lane. That's where I go. And then there is things that Keith does and, and, and details that Keith worries about that I don't, I know about, I think about, but they're not really my worry in the respect that he's the expert and I don't micromanage him in that regard, right? So we all have our our value proposition and okay. and we really need to build a team where everybody, uh, a smart team, 
where you bring together the people that are really good at what they do and can execute on the the entirety of the project. Keith, I have a question for you. Yes. Okay. How important is it to keep innovating? Okay, number one. And number two, how do you do it? Because you're in an industry, you're, you're, you're not that familiar, you are now familiar with it. Right. But I know what you're doing and I can see um, your genius in that. So how do you, number one, why is it important to keep innovating and how do you, how do, you do it? Because uh, you keep on coming up with things that other people are not doing. How do you do it? You know, I've, 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 I've tried to answer that myself. Um, I, you know, being an engineer for literally the past 25, 30, 30 years of my life, I'm always, you know, like Kevin, we're, we're solving problems on a daily basis. So mm -hmm. I think what is just in my nature, I'm always developing something. So I, I'm always innovating, whether it be at work, my day job, or here doing this. Um, just keeps your mind running. You know, if we would have just come up with our first design that worked and that was it, you know, we, we probably wouldn't be as far as we are today. But mm -hmm. for me to keep coming up with new ideas, I think it's just in my nature to do so. But I think having coming into a packaging industry and not having the bad habits that develop mm -hmm. in any industry. Any industry gets stagnant and stale over over mm -hmm. time. I mean, I, I I work with people. I work with people in my industry that, you know, I've I've been doing it this way for for 20 years. I'm not going to change. But I stepped into the packing industry not knowing any better. So by not knowing any better, I've got a different outlook on things. Okay. So I approach things differently. Um, okay. And not still not really working. In the packaging industry with another company, I, I still haven't developed any kind of bad habits or, or okay. fell into any of the pitfalls that some of the current engineers are are in, and not thinking outside the box. Um, it's okay. But also, us being able to rapid prototype mm. has been monumental. We can whip something together, and since it's just pretty much Kevin and I in the early days, it doesn't cost us anything. It doesn't mm -hmm. cost us anything to prototype and try something. We can spend a day, a week, two weeks on something, and if it doesn't work, that's fine. You know, okay. we, we're not out our R and D budget, so okay. we've really developed this this ecosystem of just try it. Doesn't matter if it's going to well, work or not, try it, because you're never going to know it's not going to work until you try it. I, you know, I, I just want to jump in for a minute. Uh, everybody, fishbone looks really simple. It's a piece of cardboard with six holes. It's not number one. And number two, all the different types of containers from cans, slim cans, bottles. We just showed you a glimpse of what's happening here. But there's a whole world of all the different techniques that Keith is designing around that works with production, which is critical, that he's thinking differently. And I've seen it. And I know a lot of people are seeing it. You guys, I want to jump real quick because we only have a minute here. Is this is this whole process driving you guys a little crazy? <laughs> crazy or mad? I think uh, that's the laugh tells it all. You know, uh, you got to be in it for the long haul. Um, yeah. I, I I would I would be mistaken uh, in, in not doing anybody any favors if I said it was easy. Uh, you know, going back to some of my work in the Middle East, I, that at the time that I did that, I thought this is the most difficult thing I'll ever do. Mm -hmm. And looking back now, uh, it seems trivial. Um, you know, the seven years that we've dedicated to this um, and, and, and the calls at two in the morning, you know, with potential customers overseas, the, 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 uh, the effort in design, the, the, Everything about just goes that goes into running a business. I mean, business is not easy, but the fruits of your labors are what you work for, right? It's yeah. the journey, and uh, and yeah, it's it's um, it, it it takes a lot of energy and effort, and, and our families probably suffer for it. I know they do uh, uh, because of of our dedication, but um, we we work towards a bigger goal 
a goal that has a, a, the potential to make an impact uh, globally for decades to come. And, and hopefully, you know, we leave this world a better, cleaner place than, than it was when we arrived. Keith? Yeah, I mean, that's that that sums it up. I mean, it's okay. It's a long haul. It's definitely a long haul. And I think some of the some of the skills that we've learned along the way that can really help is is mitigation. I mean, we've things are going to go wrong. And you you know, this, Stephen, you've you've preached it to us over the years. It's not if things go wrong, it's when things go wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest thing is what can you do to mitigate those problems before they happen, when they happen, and what you can do from preventing them happening again um, has has really helped us. And and knowing when to pivot your business as as well. We've gone through, you know, a handful of pivot points in 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 the business um, that have been stressful. And it's like, okay, let's let's go ahead and cut bait and let's let's go in a new direction. And you know, if, if we hadn't have done those things when we did them, we probably wouldn't be here today. Um, Andrew, let's let's open for questions. Thank you, yeah. Keith. I want to say one thing. Everybody that's listening tonight, there's a big announcement. We cannot make it tonight, but we're going to keep following up with the story because it's it's a it's a it's a story that impacts all of us. So I I just. I'm just so proud to be bringing on the two men in black here. I see these two photographs. I think that like the two men in black here, but um, you guys have done a great job and there's a lot of news that's going to come out soon yes. about this packaging. So yes. Andrew, let's open up, uh, let's see if there's yeah. any questions. Sure. I, I like this first one from Todd because the answer that Kevin, Keith, Stephen give is going to illustrate the difference between this product and a lot of other products that, um, inventors are trying to license. So Todd says the idea spans multiple brands. This is, he's referring to your product guys. How did you get around just licensing with Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Budweiser? My idea work with any and all betting companies, but I feel constrained to pick one company and move forward. Any suggestions? So I don't know if Steven or Kevin or Keith want to answer this, but why is this product different where you can license to multiple? Where, as we know, most people can only license to one company for most products. Yeah, can I answer that, you guys? Of course. Um, of course. This is complicated. Okay, this is complicated. <laughs> and you really, I believe, you want to license, because I was early on in my career licensing to the manufacturer of the product, not to the end user like a Pepsi or, or Anheuser-Busch. You want to find that manufacturer that you license to that supplies all those people. Yes. And I think that's what's happening here at uh, Fishbone. Is that correct, gentlemen? That is correct. correct. And that's critical. And that's been a critical point of our business and something that we've been work on developing, uh, working on developing for, for quite a few years in building our relationships. We spent a lot of time really working on finding great partnerships and uh and really what we learned uh was that and 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 we knew in advance we are not going to necessarily license to a coke a pepsi a you know you name it but being a commodity product and we didn't want to be constrained by that we mm -hmm. really need to be a product to really make the most impact that can uh, go just like a plastic ring isn't just on any one uh, mm -hmm. brand product. We, we need it to be something uh, that, that could be applied across the board. Great. Good question. Next question is from Lisa. How many employees do you have? <laughs> Technically zero. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we, we've, we've probably got about seven of us in total. Uh, you know, and that that fill out from the back end to to the front end here to the day to day, and some other folks that that uh, that help out. So uh, we're a really small, tight team. We have probably four core members, and then three additional back end members, to put it best. Jesse says, since the products vary that your in, your invention packages, are the majority of your patents utility or design? So what did you guys? Do with regards to utility or versus design, what was useful? Could there be a more complicated question, Stephen? 
Well, I love that question, as you guys know. <laughs> that, that's kind of been my wheelhouse. I think, I think overall, uh, a good IP strategy is is a combination of both. Yeah. That you have a good uh, design patterns on different uh, variations, and that's why Keith is so good at this. And the second is having um, intellectual property that not only incorporates the design, uh, but the material. The machinery, it it it's, uh, brings the the whole thing together to have a great product, and I think that's the strategy that um, Fishbone has embraced. A complete right, system. Guys, or no? Yeah, no. Uh, yes. The answer to that question is yes. Um, all of the above. Yeah. Sandeep is from India. He says, "Is the packaging material 100% plastic free?" It is recyclable. It is. Biodegradable, coatings as well. Yes, every coatings. component. And that was that was a really big component of our product development, and and one of the reasons why, you know, it's really taken um, quite a bit of time to develop a, the best product that we can come to market with, uh, is is finding those materials that are all together. Because sometimes materials on their own are recyclable or repulpable or biodegradable, but sometimes when you put those together, they're not. So we've spent a lot of time to make sure that that really hit all those aspects so that the product uh, can be uh, really, truly sustainable. The answer to the next one is, I know is complicated, but it's such a great question. Carl is showing that he is a pretty knowledgeable guy by asking this. He says, is there an opportunity to license both the product and the manufacturing equipment? <laughs> That's not an easy one to answer. That's in the short. I shouldn't even ask that one. You probably talk for 30 minutes about that. You know, really, really what it comes down to, it's a vertically integrated solution, right? So the product and the application machinery, they really go hand in hand. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, really it's, 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 they work together. And Stephen, is that, is that true of most licensing deals? Probably not. I mean, but it is true of this. I, I don't think it's typical, but I think in this situation, um, Kevin's right. It's it goes hand in hand, and it's a complete um, solution. Yeah, a, a turnkey solution. That's what people are looking for. Correct. Yeah. Um, hmm. This is. We'll we'll wrap it up with this one from Mike Miller. Uh, who is a former EventRight student. He's he's working, he's working it, he's licensing his products. And Mike says, can you talk a little bit about the delicate balance between being persistent to your vision, but not being stubborn and beating a dead horse? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, feedback. <laughs> feedback, mar market demand. I mean, I, I'm the first one to always say, you don't want to spend time on, to develop a product that is not looking for a solution, right? Um, I, you have to make sure, you have to be vigilant and you have to know that your product, you have to have faith in your product, but the, and, and you also know your product better than others. So you also, there's a fine line because you can't just listen to everybody else and, and, and everybody says, oh, your product, uh, you know, isn't this or isn't that, but you know your product. So you have to keep true to your vision. But I mean, for us, it's been a series of green lights and feedback. When we do show our product, the feedback is always really positive. So I think in that respect, we've had it easy. We haven't really ever had anybody come and say, oh, that's horrible. <laughs> so that drives us. Um, your thoughts, Keith? Yeah, I mean, it, and to a certain extent, that's, that is maybe, I would say maybe hindered us a little bit by people not saying no or giving us the feedback necessarily that we're really looking for. Um, at least from my end, when I start getting feedback that I need, it's usually when we get a little higher up in the tree, you know, and we're speaking to the engineers, we're speaking to the guys in the manufacturing side. Um, yeah. Right. So the market, the market loves it. The, the, yeah. the machinery, the, the, uh, you know, implementation side, that's always more challenging. Uh, but I think you just have to know your product and, uh, 
that's a personal decision that you have to make on your own uh, with with when you move forward and when you uh, when you cut bait. You know, and it really depends on the product as well, because like I said, we've got two guys that we're not in the packaging industry and we're talking to these engineers that, like I spoke to earlier, that are doing this for 20 years, 30 years, they're not going to change their ways. And I can tell you now that from my conversations with these engineers with the packaging companies that we're working with now, they're starting to change their ways and they are willing to conform to our design or our needs in order to get this package applied properly. So just because somebody tells you no, doesn't mean that you need to conform to them, you know, but you know your product best. And if you feel that it's, that it has to be done this way, I would, I would stick yeah. to your guns. Stay true to your vision. Yeah. yeah. We don't have time to read all the thank yous, but I'll read two because we got a ton of them here. Um, Suzanne says, gentlemen, wonderful product benefits to the world, exclamation mark. Bravo, thank you so much. You should be so proud of yourselves. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Carlos says, excellent presentation, idea, partnership, quite inspiring, thank you. And we just got a ton of thank yous here. So, um, Stephen, do you wanna say anything in closing? I, I just wanna thank, um, Kevin, for for not listening to me, okay. <laughs> first and foremost, hey, people never make said mistakes. that before. Hey, people make mistakes. Okay, so I'm glad you're not holding that to me. Um, <laughs> um, I, I like that it does take a team, and absolutely, Kevin and Keith are a great team, and there's and, other and people bring, involved. And the people that are that you bring to your team, make sure they're smarter than you. Well, that. That's a good thing, and, and uh, I think it's an important thing. But at the end of the day, to be involved, um, these two gentlemen that are involved in such a, a great product that just impacts the world, I think it's awesome. And I'm glad we had them on tonight. They can talk a little bit about the, their, their process. They're still in it, They're, and they know it's so big, it's going to, hopefully, it's gonna impact um, every country and every beverage company out there to do the right thing. And they're making change. And I'm so glad to have them on tonight. Well, we appreciate all of your support. Uh, and uh, we're grateful that you gave us an opportunity to speak uh, on this and, and hopefully help uh, provide some insight here because uh, when you have something that you're really driven to to uh, to go after and 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 can make a difference, uh, you, you should try. You should you should you should follow that, in my opinion. Yep, I agree. Well, Keith and Kevin, I can tell you all the thank yous flowing in here. People are really appreciating what you shared with them, and I think at the at the top of the hour, I I promised that it by the end, you guys would kind of have an idea of why this is a big idea. Um, so I think uh, anybody that doesn't, maybe you haven't been listening. So it, it's 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 tougher, it's bigger in volume, it's more involved with manufacturing in so many ways. It's what makes this a big idea, and um, it's incredible that you guys have persisted through through all of this. It, several people type in about how they have longer term, bigger projects too, and how they were inspired by your talk tonight and they were typing that in as well. So thank I mean, you guys Andrew, so much. Realize you've got a couple guys that have a, a vision and they're going up against the biggest companies in the world. Yeah. And they're able to make it happen. So the message tonight is you can do anything, have a roadmap, build a good team, educate yourself. You can do anything. Thank you, Keith. Great. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, everybody, for the great questions. And we'll, we're going to call it a night. Take care and keep inventing. Good night. Thank Thanks, you, Kevin. gentlemen. Good night, Thanks, everybody. everybody. Good night.